Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the budget presentation. This is the workshop where the community can come in and ask questions and we will try to consideration and see what we can do to incorporate people's ideas into the final budget. So tonight we're gonna to talk about staffing increases, the assumptions that were used for the budget, an analysis of where we are in the budget, property taxes and how they fit into closing the gap, reserves, remaining calendar. So overall staffing increases. This year, the district is looking to add one full-time social worker, one full-time teacher aide, increase one half-time secretary to a full-time, 0.5 FTE. Full-time equivalent is what FTE means. An AIS tech integrator will go from a 0.8 to a 1.0 or a 0.2 FTE increase. So our assumptions, first of all, always, our revenues must equal our expenditures. The levy increase is to be determined. We have a lot of information we still don't know yet. We don't have a final New York State budget. So that's a work in process. Expenditures. Right now, I want to remind everyone, inflation year to year has been an 8% increase. Right now, budget to budget, with those new staffing positions in there, we're looking at a 7.61% increase or $2.5 million. Any questions yet? So we do have some decreases. We've been looking hard trying to do that. Our central administration line will go down $19,000. Information technology will go down $94,000. And our employee benefits and health insurance will go down $67,000. Originally, that was going to go down. It looked like a lot more money. But when we added new staff, we have to account for their health insurance. So that's why that number has changed since the last presentation. So our general support, what the heck is that? General support is the district office, the business office, and all the expenditures that you would associate with a general business. That's going up 279,000 or 6.81% increase. Administration and improvements. Administration and improvements is the, the building offices, it's curriculum, and it's our information technology. So that's going up 173,000 or 14.07%. General education, this is where we wanna see our money. This is the education for the classrooms. It's going up $355,000 or 4.05%. Programs for students with disabilities. This looks like a high number, 521,000. Dollars 11.68%. But before you get too concerned about that, when we have students that are considered high excess cost aid, we get more state aid the following year to help pay for some of those expenditures this year. And everything that we do for the special ed students, a lot of times it is things we are mandated by law to do. So it's not like we have a choice to cut things out of their program. Occupational education, that's when we send our students off to BOCES for the career and tech and our P-TECH services. That's going up $37,000, 4.33%. And again, next year we will get increased BOCES aid because we're spending more money with them. Community education, the community education is going up $1,800 or 5.13%. It's going up because minimum wage is going up and the biggest cost increase in there is our morning program that we hear of here at Eden Elementary. So I'm certain that we're gonna to have to raise costs as minimal as possible to accommodate this, but there will be revenue to help offset this expenditure. Pupil services, that's another one that sounds like a lot that people don't really understand what it is. That is everything from our school nurses, our guidance counselors, it's our athletics, it's our musicals, 
all of those things roll up and there's 179,000 or 9.8% increase on those. Pupil transportation. This one looks like it's going up a huge amount, 281,000, 14.53%. Last year at this time, I had to project what fuel prices would be. I had money in the budget elsewhere, but not in the transportation lanes for it. Again, so we brought that money over into transportation. Now I have to project, what do I think fuel prices are going to be in June of 2024, the length of this budget? So there's an inflationary factor in there for the cost of fuel. And again, any of this money that we spend of this increase, we will receive increased aid the following year from New York State Department of Education. Civil activities, what is that? That is things like our fitness center over at the high school. It's when somebody comes in and uses our facilities and they pay rent. So I have to budget for the expenditures, even though we may or may not know what the rental costs are gonna be. And again, this is being driven, a lot of this cost, the majority is being driven by the increase in minimum wage. And again, there is a small offset in the revenue side for that. Debt service is our mortgage payment. So last June, we bonded our payments. Instead of doing short-term notes, we went to a long 15-year bonding for $901,000, 45%. And what happened there was we were able to secure our 15-year mortgage with a 3.42% interest rate. Today, the Fed raised prime interest rate, which is lower than what we paid back in June, and that's at 4.9%. So we were being very cautious by bonding early, making sure that we had the funds secured over the 15 years to reduce our interest costs. Our total expenditures went up 2.7 million. We reduced expenditures by 180,000 for a total of $2.5 million increase on this budget this year. Any questions? Thank you. Now we're gonna look at our revenues. At this part of the budget, we still don't know how much to raise in school taxes. We're gonna talk about that a little later in the presentation. Right now, we're hoping that we may or may not get more funding, and it's been a little backwards the last couple of years, but we're looking at a 1.2 million or a 9.49% increase in our state aid. Some of that is due to the foundation aid increase that there's been talk about, and some of it is like we talked about is our special education services, our BOCI services, as those transportation, as those costs go up, so do our aid on those costs. The following year, we have to spend it and then get refunded. So our state aid, we have the governor's runs. We are looking for the legislative runs at the end of the month. Federal aid, that is predominantly Medicaid reimbursement that we get for providing health care services to our neediest of students who are special education, and we get paid back from Medicaid. And that's going to remain stable over the next year. Our miscellaneous, our local revenues, that's sales tax, that's when somebody loses a book, that's also... When we have a class that's not filled with special education students, if we can put six in a classroom, but we only have four, we will look to our neighboring districts to see if they want a tuition in their students. And so that's the reason for the reduction this year. As we have more needy students here in Eden, we are experiencing less space to accommodate students from other districts. So that's going down 3.34%. Appropriated fund balance. That's the amount of money that is left over in prior year's budget. It's kind of like if any of you are aware of what owner's equity is on regular balance sheet. That money we use to appropriate to reduce taxes. So right now in this presentation that remains stable at last year's amount. And our reserves, that's again, remain stable for the Board of Education to make some decisions as we get more information because we still don't have all the information necessary. 
So our year to year expenditures, we talked about what general support is, and it's going from 4 million to 4.3 million up $279,000. Our instructional, that's where our students are being taught. That's everything regarding the actual classrooms is going from 18 million to 19.2 million, $1.175 million increase. Pupil transportation, we talked about fuel prices. That's going from 1.9 to 2.2, up $281,000. Employee benefits, debt service, civic activities, and interfund transfers, they're all kind of lumped together. The terminology is undistributed, but it makes more sense to let you know what we don't distribute into the other buckets. So that's going from 9.7 million up $837,000. 10,549,000 dollars. And part of the reason that's not going up the full 900,000 of the debt service is the offset we had because we reduced our health insurance costs, which is phenomenal because every year health insurance costs typically go higher, but we've restructured our health insurance costs to try to lower them for the district while still providing what the employees need. So our total expenditures, that the voters authorized, because that's what you uh, are authorized in the May vote, were $33,836,483. They're going up in this presentation, $2,573,480 to $36,475,000. Okay, so our revenues, we talked about them, that our state aid, we know we're hoping will stay at the 1.2 million or increase a little bit more. There's some legislation out there to increase the amount of aid we receive back on our BOCI services. We talked about that we need to now use that $70,000 that we would have received to educate our own students. So right now, our revenue is only going up 1.1 million. So what that does, it leaves us a budget gap still of $1.3 million. Any questions? So where do we go from here? We look at taxes or reserves. Those are two things that are in the board's ability. So we're going to talk about our property tax cap. So our property tax cap, is not what is voted on. The property tax cap is a formula that trends forward each year that says how much voter authorization is required in order to adopt the budget for expenditures. So a 1% levy increase brings in $154,605. 2% is 309,210. 2.25% would bring in $347,861. So as you can see, that's how it works going forward. Our maximum allowable that we could tax and still only need a 50% plus one is 7.5% or $1.1 million. And in that, this is an example of how the tax cap is not how much can be taxed, but how much voter authorization we need to approve our expenditures. So we wanna look at our history because history is where everyone wants to look to see where we were. So our true value in 2013-14 was $19.08 per thousand of assessed value. So we look at 21, 22, and 2021, I wanna jump down to those. We had a zero levy increase. We did not increase the amount of money we were gonna get from the pot as a whole, but because of equalization rates and property values, the true rate went from 1703 to $16.16, it reduced. And then this year it's going to, go down to, it went down in 21 or 22, 23 to $14.75 per thousand. Now, 
If you look on your tax bill, chances are you won't find that number because this is the district as a whole because each municipality has something called an equalization rate, which is set by the New York State Office of Real Property Tax Service. And that is what drives the individual rates in a calculation for each town municipality and what you actually see on your bills when you get them in the fall. So the potential tax increase at 1% to raise $154,605, we go from $14.75 in 22-23 to $14.90 per thousand, 15 cents per thousand or $15. If a 2% goes to $309,210 and goes up 29 cents per thousand, or for every 100,000 of assessed value, it would be $29. 2.25% would raise 347,861, would raise 33 cents per thousand or $33 for every 100,000 of assessed value. So, the maximum increase here, and again, I wanted to go show one, two, and then show a partial percentage so that people would understand kind of how it goes. 2.25 would raise $347,861, and it would cost $33 per 100,000 of assessed value, and it would be what is considered tax cap compliant. And what does tax cap compliant mean? It means that you are only asked required to get a 50% plus one voter authorization. So the impact of the levy increase on the required voter authorization, because we've been talking, I've been trying to be very careful so that everyone understands it's not the revenues, it's not the taxes that you're approving, it's the expenditures, but how much voter authorization do we need? So at 1%, 50% plus one, 2%, 50% plus one, 2.25%, 50% plus one, 7.5%, a huge number would be 50% plus one. Now, if we went to 77.51%, we would be required to have 60% voter authorization in order to pass our expenditure budget. Does that make sense? Any questions? So now we're going to talk about closing the gap. So in 22-23, we pledged $843,370 of reserves. These are the reserves that are available to close a budget gap because they do not require additional voter authorization to use. They are under the charge of the Board of Education. So we're projecting that we're gonna have $336,796 in workers' comp. We will use some of that in 23-24 to make up our total reserve pledge. So it will go to, at the end of the year, $222,004. Unemployment would go from 142 to 74 to 116,066. Now I wanna stop before I get too far because some people are looking at this and going after the second column, the numbers are all the same. Because for my presentation, I'm simply showing where we would be if we use exactly the same amount of reserves. So however much we increase the levy by, we would not be lowering these amounts because to increase the levy by, one, two, or 2.25% would not close our entire gap where we wouldn't need to utilize reserves. ERS, that's retirement for the employees retirement system. $1,945,181 is what we have set aside in our rainy day funds. And we would end the year at 1,542,811. Teachers retirement, system TRS would be, go from $429,701 to $129,701. Liability reserve would go from $554,433, would stay stable. 
our tax certiorari, which is for people who are requesting to lower their assessments, that is $43,440 and remains stable. Our employee benefit, that's for when people retire and they get their, their sick and their vacation buyouts per contracts, that goes from one, that stays stable at $1.4 million. Our repair reserve, that is the money we're setting aside to repair the coja. It's set aside to make repairs on the turf field. And if we should have a budgetary expenditure, we can either borrow from this for temporarily for two years if need be, or with a budget hearing and the Board of Education authorization, it can be a direct loan and not paid back. That will stay consistent at $314,000. So our subtotal for our reserves, and these are the reserves that are under the Board of Education control to close the gap on budget shortfalls, would go from 5.1 million down to 4.3 million. Any questions? These are the reserves that require voter authorization to use. So capital for buses and equipment, that is for anything that could be bonded for the bus garage and buildings and grounds. So it's purchasing bus buses to keep our fleets safe and our students being brought to and from school, along with the vehicles that we use to plow, things like that. That will go from 2 million down to 1.28 million. Our technology, this was a reserve that was voter authorized, and this is to replace the equipment that the district has, as all our students have one-to-one -one devices, smart boards in the classroom, all of that, this reserve is used for. And that would go from 898,000 down to 465,000. Our capital building, this one, if you look at it, well, why aren't the voters authorizing anything for this? In 2020, we used some of this reserve to pay for the local share of the current capital project. This only gets utilized and voted on when we're proposing a new capital project in which we choose to use our rainy day funds to support the local share. So our subtotal of authorized, voter authorized goes from 3.9 to 2.7. So our total reserves would go from 9.1 million down to 7.086 million if we use them in the same manner we did this year. The reason I'm supportive of this is these are, I keep saying rainy day funds, that's the term the governor likes to use. People are experiencing increased costs with an 8% inflation. So, I can't think of a better time for me to recommend to the Board of Education that we need to dip into some of our rainy day funds. That's why we save them. And if you want to know how do we get them, we get them because it's not an exact science to project 18 months in advance. So if we have savings because we've been prudent or cut costs during the school year, which typically doesn't show up in a budget hearing, then we have extra money that we put into these reserves to help balance and keep taxes from escalating so fast that people are in trouble. So our Board of Education has some decisions to make. So the assumption is, and I say assumption because we never know for sure, April 1st, the New York State budget, we're hoping will be adopted and finalized. Last year was four or five days late. So what does that mean when it's late? It means we don't have exact state aid numbers. So until we have those exact state aid numbers, it's hard to project exactly how much revenues we need to close our gap. The Board of Education is gonna to have to decide whether or not to reduce expenditures. If so, how much do they want to re reduce? How are we gonna increase revenues? All right, we can't go out and advertise on TV or do GoFundMe, so we have to increase our property taxes. If so, how much? How much can the local taxpayers afford in this turbulent economic times? We utilize our reserves and our fund balance, our rainy day funds, 
to offset so that we don't have to do so much in tax increase. And we always recommend using a combination of all of them. And if you look, that's why I have the juggling act because that's where we're going now into a juggling act of how can we make all this work. So our remaining budget schedule, boy, when we started this page was full, it's getting shorter and shorter. April 1st, we're hoping for an on-time budget. April 11th is scheduled a 7 p.m. board meeting in this auditorium here in Eden Elementary to adopt a budget. April 24th, I have to tell New York State how much expenditures the district is planning on utilizing and confirm whether or not they've actually decided to increase voter authorization from 50% plus one to 60%. And then on May 2nd, there will be a budget hearing here in this auditorium where we'll talk about some of the successes of the past year. We'll talk about where the numbers are and what we're asking voters to approve on May 16th when they go to the high school. The foyer by the auditorium is where we set up every year for the elections from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Are there any questions? Then I thank everyone for coming and I appreciate the people who are taking the time to understand our budget process here at Eden. So thank you very much.